If you are an emotional eater who tends to overeat because of things like feeling sad or feeling stressed or anxious or anything like that, then this video is for you. Because today I'm going over some studies looking at how stress affects your hunger hormones and how your hunger hormones are actually different if you are an emotional eater. And most importantly, I'm also gonna go over what you can do about it. And sorry about my little break from making videos. I was actually finally turning in my dissertation that I'd been sitting on for over a year because I had to delay my graduation date from four years to five years because of COVID and not being able to start my next job last year. So I am now officially Dr. Mish PhD. So I was busy doing all the paperwork for that and taking a vacation to celebrate. And so now to update my usual introduction, hey there, I'm Dr. Mish PhD. I don't think I'll keep saying that because it just sounds weird, we'll see. And on this channel, I like to share scientific studies to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And the focus of today's video is emotional eating and stress eating. And so I will jump right into the first study. So these researchers looked at how just anticipating getting stressed out affected how much people ate and people's hunger hormones and how these things differed in people who were emotional eaters versus not emotional eaters. And what they did was they took a bunch of participants and they told half of them that they were going to give a very stressful speech on their qualities as a job candidate for their dream job and they had to do this in front of a panel of judges so it was like a very stressful task and this was the stress group. The other half of participants were told that they would just have to do some boring questionnaire. So both groups had this like anticipation or waiting period and in all these participants they gave them a questionnaire to figure out if they were emotional eaters. And I've actually used this questionnaire in my own research, it's a very widely used scale. And they found that emotional eaters actually didn't have a higher BMI but they did have a higher body fat percentage, which I thought was pretty interesting. So it seems like it's kind of affecting body composition more than your actual weight if you're an emotional eater. But that's more of a topic for a different video. So during this anticipation period when participants were waiting to have to do this next task, either the very stressful thing or the very boring thing, the researchers came and gave them a plate of brownies. And the researchers said that they were just required to provide food because they were going to be taking a blood test, which was to get their hunger hormones, but they, don't, they didn't know that at the time or the participants didn't know that at the time. These participants had this plate of brownies there while they were waiting to do this really stressful thing. And in this stress condition, the researchers found that people's hunger hormone ghrelin increased. So ghrelin is a hunger hormone that goes up when you're hungry and goes down after eating. So it's quite simple. So higher ghrelin equals higher hunger. And the researchers found that in the stress group, people's ghrelin levels went up. So that's pretty interesting that getting stressed doesn't just make you like feel like eating just because eating sounds good or something, it actually makes your hunger hormones increase just from being stressed. So I think that itself is pretty interesting that your feelings of hunger as a result of stress aren't just like completely in your head, it's actually hormones causing you to feel hungrier. And what I think was the most interesting part of this study is that they found that in non-emotional eaters, so people who don't struggle with emotional eating, they would eat some brownies and then their ghrelin went down after eating the brownies, just as ghrelin is supposed to do. So they were hungry and they felt hungry, they ate and then they were no longer hungry and their hunger hormones reflected that. But in emotional eaters, when they ate the brownies, the researchers actually found that their ghrelin did not go down. So this was especially interesting given that emotional eaters did eat slightly more of the brownies. So in non-emotional eaters, they ate brownies, hunger hormones went down like they're supposed to. But in emotional eaters, they ate slightly more brownies, but still their hunger hormones did not go down. They stayed elevated. And I think any fellow emotional eaters out there can probably attest what it's like when you're like binging or overeating from feelings. It's this bizarre feeling, at least for me, where I would be getting full, so like my stomach would be filling up, I'd be getting sick even, or like starting to feel ill, but I would still feel like bizarrely hungry, like the appetite was still fully there and I still felt like I really needed to eat. So I think this study is really nice to validate that feeling from a hormonal point of view because it really is reflected in biology, the fact that for whatever reason you keep eating and you don't feel full. So even though I think it's really cool to know what stress and emotional eating are doing to your hunger hormones, you're probably wondering how this applies to your life and what you can do about it. So I've got some tips for you on how to help with this weird hunger hormone situation that is happening with emotional eating. And so the first thing I want to say is that if you are an emotional eater and you feel bad about it and you feel like bad about having this big appetite, you should not feel bad about it. It's literally hormones. So if you beat yourself up, that actually 
can make it worse. So I hope that having this biological validation can help you not beat yourself up when you are eating emotionally. Luckily, there are other things that can influence your hunger hormone ghrelin besides just emotional eating and stress and whatnot. And a big thing that actually influences how much your ghrelin levels change after eating is what type of food you eat. So conveniently, I've actually already gone over two studies that have included the findings on this. And one of them is that eating unprocessed foods results in lower ghrelin after eating or lower hunger hormones than processed foods. So if you're feeling emotional and wanting to eat, it's a good idea. I mean, it's already a good idea anyway for all the other reasons, but it's an especially good idea to reach for unprocessed whole foods because that will help you lower that hunger hormone ghrelin more. Similarly, high carb meals have been shown to lower ghrelin more than high fat meals or even high protein meals. So I know a lot of other YouTubers will tell you to avoid carbs, especially when you're stress eating or whatever, but there's a reason you want to reach for the carbs. So if you want pasta or bread or whatever carb you want, you should go for it. And if you really want fat, you should go for that because intuitive eating is important. But if you are split between wanting carbs and wanting fat, it's probably a better idea to go for the carbs. And it's probably the best idea of all to go for unprocessed high carb foods like potatoes and whole grains, rice, things like that. So yeah, if you are someone who craves carbs during an emotional eating binge or something like that, it might be that your body actually knows what's best for it. And it's very possible that the reason that ghrelin stayed elevated in emotional eaters in this study is because they were eating highly processed brownies that were pretty high in fat. So therefore, even if ghrelin stayed high in this study, it's possible that eating a higher carb meal or a less processed meal could help to bring that ghrelin down more in emotional eaters. But luckily, even if there is just something like totally screwed up with ghrelin in emotional eating, no matter what you eat, there are actually other hunger hormones that increase satiety. So for example, leptin and PYY are other hormones where when their levels are higher, you get less hungry and feel more satiated. And luckily, both carbs and unprocessed foods also increase the levels of these satiety hormones. So yeah, if you find yourself eating emotionally and want to try to help lower your appetite a little bit after eating so that you don't still feel hungry after eating, these are some tips for you that can hopefully help you out. And also I just want to add, some of you might be thinking like, when you get stressed out, you actually completely lose your appetite altogether. And there is kind of a U-shaped curve with stress and eating. So if you get extremely stressed, like for example, when I lost my dog because I left the house for 10 minutes to get groceries at my grandma's house and she ran out after me while I was gone and she was missing for 24 hours. Like I was so extremely stressed that I literally could not eat till I found her the next day. So yes, ultra high stress actually reduces your appetite, but things like giving a big talk or having a stressful conversation or having a bad day, like those kinds of moderate, or mild stressors tend to increase hunger, whereas ultra extreme stress tends to decrease hunger. And also to provide some hope if you struggle with emotional eating and feel like it's totally hopeless, I used to emotionally eat a lot, like a lot, a lot, like I would binge a lot for the better part of 10 years, and now I don't really eat emotionally much, like hardly ever. Sometimes I'll have like one or two cookies if I'm feeling stressed and want something a little extra palatable that it's no longer an overeating problem. So I feel like with intuitive eating and following these psychological principles I've been sharing with you on this channel for years now, you can stop being an emotional eater if you want to. So there is hope for you, but for now, for a small tweak to what you eat, you might find that it helps you not overeat as much when you're struggling with emotions. So yeah, I hope this was helpful or at least interesting for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like, does this match up with your own experience in terms of what you tend to eat when you eat emotionally, or do you think it's different? Like, I'd love to hear whatever you have to say. So yeah, comment below. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and especially the notification bell if you wanna keep up with my videos. And if you're feeling generous, please like or share because it helps me reach more people with this information to hopefully help people struggle less with dieting and weight loss and all these kinds of things. So yeah, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time.